voted to approve giving moderate Syrian rebels supplies and training. That's the only vote that's been held so far. Many in Congress seem to want to hold a, a vote on the entire authorization, or at least they say they do. Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi said this week that Congress should vote on it in the upcoming lame duck session. That's when members return to Washington after the election, but before the new Congress is sworn in in January. Well, House Speaker John Boehner has suggested that the lame duck session is not the appropriate time for a war debate and that Congress should wait until January. Congress has already skipped town until after the election with no new vote, maybe until the new session. And so for now, the airstrikes continue with the president saying he already has the authority to act on his own. But some brand new polling uh, data, this is released just moments ago, shows that Americans have little faith in airstrikes and that they'll achieve what they're designed to. Nearly two thirds of Americans, you can see. In a new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, nearly two-thirds of Americans say that airstrikes alone without ground troops will have no effect or only a slight effect on ISIS. Brand new polling numbers right there. The election is in 30 days. But the new Congress won't start until 90 days from now. It was a little more than three months ago that we first learned about this extremist Al-Qaeda splinter group, too extreme supposedly even for Al-Qaeda, that was taking over large chunks of Iraq and causing the Iraqi army to fold in the face of its advance. So where will ISIS be three months from now? Will the congressional debate even matter then? To discuss this, I'm joined by Congressman Adam Schiff of California, member of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Congressman, uh, thanks for joining us this morning. So I, I want to say, yes. you have been out there, you are not only saying you want to vote, you've actually put this in language, you've actually put legislation forward for a new authorization for the use of military force. So you are on the record with that. I, I saw this week that the Democratic leader, uh, Nancy Pelosi, saying she now thinks Congress should be ready to talk about this and debate this in that lame duck session after the election. Have you talked to her specifically about your legislation and do you know if she supports that? I haven't talked to her about my bill in particular and uh, you know I'm not wedded to frankly any approach even my own but I do think it's vitally important uh, that when we come back into session uh, if not before that we have a vote on this. Uh, Congress has the power to declare war. Congress has that power alone uh, and if we abdicate that authority now if we kick it over till next year or kick it over any further uh, then future presidents are going to decide you know they can go to Congress they can go to war without Congress uh, and I think would have tremendously negative repercussions both for Congress as institution as well as for the balance of power so uh, while I would love uh, the, the resolution that I authored to be taken up uh, I, I would just love to see us have that debate that the British Parliament did uh, and take up a, an authorization and make sure that we move forward in a constitutional way so the president right now has authorized basically open-ended campaign of airstrikes in Syria, in Iraq, designed to go after ISIS, designed to support the Iraqi uh, military in, in its campaign against ISIS to protect itself from ISIS. That is what the president's authorized. That's what we're doing right now. What would your legislation allow for? Well, my legislation authorizes the president to use force against ISIL in Iraq and in Syria. Uh, it prohibits the use of ground troops uh, in a combat mission. So it would limit uh, the military mission in that respect, which is something the president said he wants to do in, in terms of that limitation. It also sunsets the original uh, AUMF, that original authorization passed in the days after 9-11, uh, in about 18 months, the same time that this new authorization would be sunset. Uh, and immediately does away with the Iraqi authorization to use force, which really is not on point here. Uh, so it also cleans up some of these lingering authorizations that can go on indefinitely unless Congress acts on them. How many of your colleagues do you think really actually do want to vote on this? Well, there's a growing number, I think, that uh, genuinely want to vote, that uh, feel very uncomfortable about allowing the executive to go forward without Congress. Uh, certainly, you know, there are many that might say that or many that won't even say that because they're happy to leave this all on the president's shoulders. That way they can blame the president if things go uh, badly and they can celebrate and say, why don't we do it sooner if things go well. But uh, I think there's a growing body of members that recognize their constitutional obligation. Uh, and there's going to be a real push to take up something in the lame duck, notwithstanding the speaker's resistance to doing so. Is there an argument to be made there, though? I mean, in, in terms of, I mean, I, I would argue that the right time to be debating this and having a vote in Congress is now, because people are going to vote a, a month from now, and people deserve to know exactly where every member of Congress stands on this and what they think about this. And when you do it in a lame duck session, people have already voted. A lot of those members aren't going to be accountable to the voters anymore. They're going to be out of office.
but they're going to be on to other things. So is there something to be said for, yeah, the lame duck is not, I mean, it's better to vote than not vote, I guess, but the lame duck isn't the right time to be doing that. Well, you're absolutely right, and the reality is we should have never gone out of session. We should have stayed uh, until we had this very important debate. I mean, there are a few things more important than uh, a vote on war or peace, and the president uh, has said this will last years, uh, that it amounts to war, and for us to go into recess uh, is just inexcusable. And, and I find it uh, all the more dubiously ironic, Steve, that you have a speaker saying, well, I can't bring up a vote on this because the president hasn't asked me to. Uh, this from a speaker who is suing the president for using too much authority. There's nothing in the Constitution that says the president has to ask. It merely says this is Congress's obligation. Uh, so I, I find that uh, extraordinarily questionable. Uh, there's nothing in the Constitution also that says we can't have a war vote before an election. That's uh, the, the most crass, I think, political consideration. So I don't think we should have left, but having left, I think we ought to come back and have this vote as soon as possible. And, and final question, so the, your, your plan, uh, the, the, the bill that you've put together, uh, the authorization you've put together would not allow for the use of ground forces, ground troops. And we, we hear this uh, refrain all the time, no boots on the ground, no boots on the ground. We heard this from the president. And, and it, it sort of assumes, I think, that there's a mentality in this country that after a decade plus of war, this country is tired of committing its troops over, overseas. And yet we've seen polling in the last week that's really surprised me, where you ask people this question. They, they, a plurality of Americans now say they would support ground troops if the military commanders say that is what's needed to get this done. A plurality say they would support ground troops. We have that new polling also out this morning showing an awful lot of pessimism among Americans about whether airstrikes alone will get this job done. Does it surprise you to find that level of support for ground troops? Well, it surprises me a bit, except when you, I think, dig into those numbers. If you ask people, do they support people on the ground who may, for example, be able to spot airstrikes uh, versus do you support having a multi-year ground mission like we had earlier in Iraq or in Afghanistan, now in Syria or Iraq? Most people, I think, are going to say no to that question. So at times it depends on how you define what you mean by ground troops. Uh, the bottom line, though, is that the massive occupation of another country or two countries uh, just isn't likely to work. It's not likely to be effective. And while I understand people's skepticism that uh, we can ac accomplish our objectives through the air or in combination with the forces that we're trying to work with on the ground, I, I think, frankly, there's even greater reason for skepticism that another massive American occupation makes any military sense. All right, Congressman Adam Schiff from California, appreciate the time this morning. Thanks for that.